yeah, 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 we get lit, we get fly, we get drunk, we get high, but to the masses, we are a podcast called Verified. I am your host, I am Joe Paul. Make sure you check us out at theverifiedpodcast.com. We are brought to you by Radio Pushers and Results and No Hype. And right now, I guess the only way to bring this esteemed guest in is to be like, because it's Jack Thriller on the Verified. We talk about your life while I get high as a fucking kite. Mr. Jack Thriller in the building. Also known hey. as Pimp Honey Buns. For those that really, if you don't know, Come on now. you know. Jack Thriller, thank you so much for taking your time, brother. I know that you're real, real busy lately. So I do appreciate you allocating some time for the Verify podcast. But we can give you some flowers and we can conduct a dope, dope interview of the likes of which people have never seen. My brother, thank D- you. D- I love all that. I love all that. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So. Jack Thriller, you definitely are a, uh, a staple and a cultural icon within the hip hop community from which there's nobody else really in that lane, you know, that really wears many, many hats like you do. Like, you're not a one trick pony by any means. And I think that people have seen that over the course of your career. It actually and this is not to underplay what you do. I'm really surprised that you have not got that multi-million dollar contract, three movie deal, you know, like your, your accolades are endless. So it's a, it's a blessing that I have you here so that we can celebrate, you know, the shit that you've done in case people who don't know, they're going to know today. So, okay, I like where you're going with this, man. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very the, impressed. Lush I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Listen, from the, from the King, of the interviewers that did it before it was even a thing, I better be on my A game today. So, my brother, that's I how you feel. You. Okay, absolutely. Listen, you're you're right up there with. I mean, really, you're one of the originators. I mean, this is fifty. You know, was a podcast before a podcast was a podcast. So, I feel like there there are a lot of people. You know that you know when they you know salute like you know. You know, people like Combat Jack or, um, or uh, man, I've been smoking all fucking morning, so, so I'm forgetting his name now. Um, he, he's in jail, uh, that thing with, uh, with, uh, Jack with Stone. Uh, yeah, there you go, uh, Tax Stone. It's like, I feel like your name needs to be shed in that sort of light along with them. So I hope you don't mind in me telling the entire world, yo, you better open up your fucking eyes to Jack Thriller. Even though he has one, he can see shit clearly. Come on now. I didn't do a lot of shit niggas with two eyes can't do. Oh, that's a fact. So let's get into your story. I wanna I wanna know about like who like the the early Jack Thriller was before he was Jack Thriller, even before he was Honey Bun. So I know that you were uh you were born in the A, you know. Um so talk to me about young Jack Thriller, you know, before he was Jack Thriller when he was just growing up, young boy coming up in the game, elementary school Jack. Like for instance, like uh like I, I know your mom was a minister, uh, but what'd your father do? Oh, uh, my, my, my dad was a, a bank robber and uh, he moved, he, he met my mom in LA. Uh, he he, he uh, went out to become an actor and she went out to become a singer. She used to sing background for J- James Brown and, um, you know, things didn't really work out. And uh, she tried to go, you know, pursue a singing career in LA and then, you know, uh, got discouraged and started going to nursing school. And then her uh, and my uh, father met each other my mom's from Albany, Georgia. My dad is from Decatur, uh, Alabama. And uh, they had me in LA and uh, moved back to um, to Albany, Georgia. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I was born, Albany, Georgia. And I'm raised uh, in uh, Atlanta. Okay. By, okay. In Decatur, Decatur to be exact, from the age of uh, seven on up. I've lived in also Decatur, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama. And you put, but the most of my uh, childhood takes place in uh, Decatur, uh, Georgia. Okay, okay. Now you said your your father was a bank robber. So did you ever aspire to you know following his footsteps? No, nah, I had one eye, so you know I never could you know have the luxury of watching my back, my side, and everything. Gotcha. So I had to go figure something else out. So I took what their ambitions was, you know, as far as dream wise, just to the next level. They never shared that with me. Until I, I was older, what they wanted to do, um, I just got inspired by uh, it was a lot of things you, you can't do when you 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 are, quote unquote, handicapped kid coming up because I was born blind in my left eye. 
and um, uh, uh, you know, so my parents was overprotective of me until as much as they could be until I got to school, and that's when all the the fun started, and I started to really uh, 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 develop my personality around uh, you know, uh, hanging uh, other kids. Kids is mean and a motherfucker, so you either going you know, uh, let people push you around, or you gonna start back pushing everybody else that's that's around you. I, I feel you. And, and I was going that was one of my questions actually that, that I had like pre-prepared, you know, did the fact that you were born handicapped or had one eye, like, did you, did you suffer? Li- I mean, kid, kids are fucking ruthless. I mean, I know in my fucking high school, you know, in my junior high school, you know, I was a short fucking shit. So people always thought that they could push me around. So I had to have a Napoleon complex. So I used to fight a lot, you know, and I'm pretty good at it. So, you know, but I never wanted to fight because I knew how to fight and I just didn't want to hurt anybody just because you're fucking, you know, trying to make me look like a fool. It's like, okay, well, we got to go toe to toe. So were the kids like ruthless with you and teasing you and stuff like that? Oh yeah, they went in. They they this is the eighties, man. So you know they they uh they had no filter with it. It was on and popping, man. So I, every day I fought. I was running. Uh, they the, the, I would have the whole bus, the whole bus full of kids chasing me. They'd get off of my stop. They don't live nowhere where I stay. Would get off of my stop and chase me, throwing rocks at me every day. Like Damn. yeah, trying to kill me, trying to kill me. I would be fighting three and four kids at a time. Uh, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, because I didn't know how to back down. I didn't gotcha. know how to walk away. Um, uh, um, if you if you wanted it with me, I was gonna get it to you. I, I was very scrappy, and you know I didn't win all of my fights, but um, you know I I I, um, I, I won a lot. I made my point. People would people didn't try me by themselves. Yeah, I remember like the you know in the eight, I'm, I'm an '80s baby also, so it's like I mean people don't realize that like. You know, before technology and stuff like that, like 80s society in terms of kids, kind of like jail rules. It's like if somebody yeah. te- if somebody tested you, you needed to fucking stand up for yourself or yeah. you were going to you were going to get it every single day and on. And 100 percent. And, and I, now uh, I've known you for years. So and it's like I see that, you know, your your mental toughness or your mental fortitude is, you know, is extravagant. You know, so I have to imagine that all that ridicule that you've, you know, received or the teasing, you know, because of your disability had to have like kind of molded you into the basically, you know, the, you know, the Jack thriller of today and probably gave you even like, you know, your wits. Cause I've seen a bunch of your interviews and you're fucking quick witty with it. Like, like off the top of the head, like freestyle rap battle type of witty with it. So it's like, you know, I, I bet that at, at a certain point, those kids couldn't say nothing to you because you would have fucking fired back with something, you know, verbal that would have just embarrassed the shit out of them. You well, know, similar well, see, to like that, a battle rap would do. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I did. And I, when I did it, I, I was going for the jugular because they went Heard for the their jugular. feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what the, that was what the whole um, situation was when it came to defending myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you wanted to embarrass me, like, I, I know it. I was gonna go to my. I was gonna do my best to take it to a whole nother level, and I didn't care what the consequences was, and whatnot. I, 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 I didn't care. I wanted to make you feel what you was trying to make me feel. You know what I'm saying? So if, if anybody, you have aspirations to try to hurt me, you know, I'm. I was gonna give you that same energy back a, a thousand times, and it worked the opposite way too. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you respected me, or if you liked me, you, uh, you were, you got just a. a an abundance of friendship. I'm I'm a really get, great guy. If you got to know me, but it take people to get to know me. You know, past what the physical was in order for them to find that out. And uh, so I had spent most of my childhood winning people over. When you got past my exterior, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, All right, well, listen. Uh, I think you've done a, a marvelous job, my brother. And I always say that. You know, the things that happened in the past, you know, it's kind of like the the sculptor with a plain block of clay, you know, and every little piece that's sculpted is like an experience or a memory that you've had that kind of shaped you into the person that you are today. So and we're we're constantly evolving and we're constantly changing. So I, I like to think that there's never one finished statue. There's always room to shed some layers and expose the real person, you know, who's within. So, you know, I, I'm so I'm glad you, you shared that with us, because uh, a lot of people probably would just assume, you know, based on your you know, your big, tough exterior that you were just, you know, kicking ass, you know, right out the womb, you know, and, you know, we're real people. People tend to, you know, 
I don't want to say idolize, you know, like they're celebrities, but, you know, they don't they don't look at us like real people, like real shit has happened to us, you know, where, you know, the, everything that happened, you know, I'm a product of, of what happened back in the day. So so I'm glad you shared that story with us. So so, so after you uh, started getting the respect of your peers, you know, what would what did you like aspire to like be when you were growing up in school? Like Michael Jackson, Bobby Brown. Uh, Richard Pryor, um, Jamie Foxx, uh, Red Fox, um, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, um, you know, all, Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, uh, just all of that rolled into one. Uh, Robin Williams, Chris Farley, uh, John Belushi, uh, Sam Kennison. Um, oh man, I, I, James I, Brown. I love Sam Kennison because I was a loud oh, fucking yeah. kid. So it's like yeah. when I when I would just hear him like scream like, wah, 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 I'd be like, like yeah, yeah. But what was the first like? Uh, like how'd you fall in love with comedy? Who was the first? Who was the one that really that really tickled your fancy? Pause. Man, man, it, it, it had to be the, the, um, a tie between Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor because I uh, my mom. When we, I would come home sometimes when kids would get the best of me, um, and she would, she said, won't you just learn how to talk about yourself? That's what Richard Pryor did and whatnot. And you see, he make a lot of money doing that. And so uh, I wasn't, I don't, I didn't know who he was. And then I, I was watching a movie one day, happened to be watching a movie one day, and it was either Busting Loose or The Toy. And I love these pictures and moving. My sister had brought them, brought them home. Uh, uh, she, cause she worked at Blockbuster. At the time, and uh, she's like nine years older than me. I have two sisters, one nine years, one ten years older than me. Um, and one worked at Blockbuster Movies, and she would bring movies home all the time. She brought Moving, Busting Loose, uh, and the best of Eddie Murphy from Saturday Night Live. Oh, and okay. Those, 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 those tapes really changed me. And uh, being, you know, mixed in at the time with uh, Michael Jackson, I think the Bad Album is out now at this particular time, Mike, like 86 or some shit like that. And, uh, you know, all of that just shaped who I was and whatnot as a comedian. Um, I didn't I, I didn't know it was going to be a comedian. I would love to have been an uh, uh, entertainer, a singer like Michael Jackson, but I didn't look like him, I didn't dance like him. So, you know, but, but I, I knew you know, I wanted I mean, to be a star. Rather than, I'm sorry to cut you off or cut your wisdom, my apologies, because you said you would be a singer. Most people don't know. You got a pretty decent singing voice. Now, I've been in the music industry since 1996. Uh, I, I've wrote and I've produced and, and I've recorded, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. And when you're just fucking around, you carry a real tone. I'm surprised that you never wanted to, like, record an album of you actually. Like, I did. Singing, even if it was I like did. a weird Al Yankovic type of shit. You, there's a market I there did. for it. I just want 10% I for giving the idea. I, I did do that. I, I've done it for years. I had a, um, a couple of songs that I would do inside my comedy set for years. But, you know, just the stars in the line for it to be able to for me to get that out. You know, what work was working. And, uh, you know, just I was just in a, in, in a space where I people when I got to somewhere where people started to know who I was, they didn't want that from me yet. Because the other thing that I did was so, uh, so dope. That that just would seem like it was out of the question. They wouldn't let they wouldn't let me do it, even though no matter how tr hard I tried to fight to do it. But you know, timing is everything, and it That's ain't no time like twenty twenty one. And I got a couple of uh, record deals on the table right now. Oh, that's right what's now. Up. Like I'm, like I'm gonna light it up money. for that one. R real money, and uh, I'm really excited about everything that's going on because it's God's time. You know, uh, if it had happened when I wanted it to, uh, Jay. Uh, shit, I probably would have lost it. You got, I probably would have died. Uh, all, all kind of shit because I wasn't mentally ready for that type of success because I always had this shit. Well, I'll show you when I really you know what I'm saying, to show myself. Well, you know, you know what it is? Now, with, with, with us creatives, you know what I'm saying, we have a certain entrepreneurial spirit about us that maybe people don't see. And it's up to us to basically, you know, pull the mask up, you know, from their eyelids to expose the truth and be like, nah, like I am this shit. You need to smell me. Okay. You're going yeah, yeah, yeah. to step in a pile of me. You keep on walking a couple of steps. You're going to see. So sometimes but, people don't see the vision, but like you said, timing is everything. And I can tell by the smile on your face a couple of seconds ago, oh, you in a good place. It's about to be lit. Yeah. Well, and you know, like I said, it's, it's, Right now, I'm doing it for me. It ain't got, I don't give a fuck who like it or who don't like it. It's about me. 
right now. I'm doing what I want to do. And, um, you know, uh, uh, peace of mind is, um, is way, is, is, is way more rewarding than trying to be a people pleaser and just doing what everybody likes to see you do. You know, I'm going, I'm going to be the whiz this time. And I'm going to tell you what color we wearing today. And that's why, that's how I'm going to live my life from here on out. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I've been trying to do that in the past, but now, like I said, I actually, uh, full blown and confident in owning my own self and not trying to appease others to get to a certain space to uh, be able to do what I want. If that makes any sense. It makes perfect sense. You don't, if, if there's one person that doesn't need to put on like the commercially viable, acceptable face to society because of all the longevity and work that he's done, it is definitely you. Like you ain't got nothing more to prove. Like you I got nothing else you, to prove. And, and what's great about you is that because of your tenure within your space, you have a core audience that is going to fuck with you regardless you have fans and you have fanatical fans and you got both of them so it's really a winning combo so whoever wants to invest their money into a you know solidified brand he is on the verified podcast for a reason so write that check send it to my brother so uh, so so you wanted to be in entertainment you were inspired by uh, a lot of these artists what actually you know, was like the driving force to get you to actually like try your hand at comedy or what, what was the first thing that you tried in entertainment? Was it like guest starring in like music videos and getting thrown out of the Luda video, or, you know, or just making a name for yourself by doing some funny shit? Because you were doing like skits before skits were skits, you know, and you didn't even realize it. So what was like that? You know, what was your entry point? I, when I was 12 years old, I went to a, um, a, a acting camp. Uh, in uh, I was at Alabama State, and I think that's in Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, you know, I, I they 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 taught performing arts and uh, singing, and uh, you know, had like different productions and stuff. My teacher had actually uh, one of my special ed teachers. She actually referred me to that, and because she thought that I I was, she told me that I was a comedian, and um, my mom uh, allowed me to go. And uh, it was a it was a really great experience for me. I I met other kids that were extremely talented and whatnot, and they would it was very intimidating too. And it just made me feel like I could do it. And then I got into a gospel play called Will to Survive uh, with Rerun from What's Happening. I don't know if you ever remember that show, What's Happening. I remember. I was born in 1980, of course. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was in a, a play with him uh, that uh, my stepfather at the time he Still had uh, exactly. He, he had a uh, cast the rerun in there, man. We would go uh, uh, touring the Chitlin circuit, doing his play and everything until we run die. Okay. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I was, that was like probably from 12 to 12 to 14 or something like that. And then after that, um, I started, I, I was working, I was 17 years old and I was working at this, uh, for this, uh, this company called AmeriCorp, NYSP. And they would send us out to, to uh, teach kids how to read from um, ages kindergarten through fifth grade. And that's okay. mind you, I dropped out of school too. And so while I'm doing it, one of the girls that was on my team, they sent us to elementary school. She worked at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. And um, the Kings of Comedy was coming to town. And I asked her to get me some tickets to go see the Kings of Comedy. And she, and, uh, she got me some tickets and everything. And I went alone and because um, I couldn't get the girl I wanted to go go with me. Uh, that's such totally what I have story, story of my life but, but they, they, they answer it now trust me but, they, oh, they, oh, my DMs is full of shit full, yeah, full of shit no oh, I, I can only imagine like, like bro, if, if, bro, if mine is bro. If mine is bro if mine is lit yours is fucking damn near a forest fire oh my god it's unbelievable yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that offline actually we'll talk about that later but yeah so, okay. so get back to the story so you went to see the kings of comedy and for those of why don't you uh, fill our younger audience in because, you know, they think that, you know, like th- that comedy, it just existed, you know, when, you know, they started watching it. But the Kings of Comedy were the Kings of Comedy for a reason. Yes, yes. I, I want to say this was like 1998, 99, and that's um, Bernie Mac. That's um, Who uh, it? Uh, 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 Cedric Entertainer, Steve Harvey, D.L. Hughley. And um, opening up for them uh, uh, was J. Anthony Brown. And Ryan Cameron from the Ryan Cameron Morning Show out here in Atlanta. And he's still a big DJ right now. And Ryan Cameron used to bring me on to the, um, uh, what was it? 
hot nine seven ninety seven point five ninety seven point five in Atlanta. He used to bring me up when I was like fifteen, sixteen to his uh to the radio station, and I, that's what the time I thought I wanted to be a disc jockey in Atlanta and whatnot. And then I didn't know he was a comic too. And then I saw him opening up in front of twenty thousand people at Phillips Arena. I was like, oh shit! I think that's what I am. I think I'm I'm a I, I, matter of fact when when I seen Bernie Mac ripping that motherfucker. I was like, I I gotta do this. This shit looks scary as fuck, but that's what I want to do. And that's uh, when the, that's know, when you got the bug right there. That's when I got the bug. Went to Chris Tucker Comedy Club the next weekend, and uh, I, I, cause I want to go see Kings Comedy back to back next night too. And the next night I snuck in, and uh, uh, uh I went to go Chris Tucker Comedy Club a week later, and the rest is history. That's what's up. That, so the first time you stepped on stage and you actually gave it. You know, a try. Yeah, talk, I did to really about, well. talk to me about what's going through your head this way. Any of our young entertainers, entrepreneurs, you know, that, you know, are trying their hand at anything, realize that they got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in order to be successful. So why don't you explain like exactly what's going through your mind, you know, right before they call your name, you know, come into the stage, you know, and then walk me through it. So this way we get a real good picture of what's going through your rookie performance man i'm the whole time i'm i'm uh, just like terrified that oh shit i'm next i'm next what am i going to say and what not cuz i had no set together i was just going to go up there and wing it and what improv you yeah, just improv and thought that it was a just something like being in the classroom and the shit if you funny you just going to be funny and you know people they saw my personality uh, but i did the, the material wasn't there and whatnot. So it went fairly well. They let me get through it. And I, I just kept on just getting through it until I started getting booed, which was probably like the third time I started getting booed the third time. But I knew I wanted it. And uh, I just kept on coming back and coming back. And I, I just I wasn't afraid of rejection because I've been rejected my whole life. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, I, I knew I could get it if I could just crack the code of what stand up was and how that shit went. And um, a couple of years later, I met. That's when I met Lil Duval. Because um, I, I was good at improv, but not at not at stand up. And, and Lil Duval had told me what I was doing wrong, which was extremely obvious, but it wasn't obvious to me. And okay. what he did, it was like a ton of bricks. It just hit me in the head, and I was like, "What the fuck? I've been playing myself the whole time." And so, and, what, so what was that that he said? I wasn't um, talking about myself and I wasn't ad addressing the elephant in the room, which was my eye. So the same thing your mother had told you about yes. Richard, Richard Pryor, little yes. Duval had to reinforce it. Yes, he had to reinforce it. And because like when I would be around him and we'd just be going back and forth, I do it then, but I wouldn't do it in front of people. I was I wasn't embarrassed to do it in front of uh, him. Cause he's my friend and I was comfortable and he had to show me how to get comfortable with everybody else. Th that's not my friend and make them my friend and put up that, uh, that, uh, uh remove that, uh, fourth wall. Gotcha. gotcha. Fourth wall, meaning, uh, the stage. So people looking into you look like, you know, how you, you can look into the TV, but they can't see out at you. Right. You feel me? You're acting as if they're not even there. Yeah, when I perform, there's like, I mean, oh, there's always like a spotlight. So it's like you could always see like the first couple of rows, but then it's just like a white light and everything is just like foggy. And plus, I've been wearing my sunglasses. I'd be smoking, you know, when I'd be rapping and performing, you know, so. But it's like I can see all of them. So it's like I just try to, you know, just look above them. You know, they can't really sometimes they can't see my eyes anyway. But for people that don't know, it's fucking scary to, you know, be able to try to connect to an audience that, you know, has never seen you before. You know, 100 percent. But once you win them over, you know, it's like Maximus in the Coliseum. You know what I'm saying? Are you not entertained? You know, yeah. And then you and you got them and you win your freedom, you know, and then you kind of can set your own price. The price goes up. You get to create your own lane, you know, and that's kind of what you did. Not too many people have, you know, lived in your space, you know. So and uh, I saw in one of your interviews, you said that, you know, everything that you wanted to accomplish when you came to New York, you did. You know, I so, did. yeah. So walk us through when you first got to New York, you know, uh, where, where you settled in at, you know, like because 
New York is a tough is a tough city. You know, I mean, I'm sure. Listen, I know that where you come from is, you know, is the gritty, dirty, dirty. You know, and they they get busy over there. So, but what was uh, you know what's funny about that? It's funny that just you know my boy uh, Daniel Daniel Gene. He uh, he's a uh, Instagram star now. He used to be my guy yeah, before he popped friends, out. Good, good friends with Daniel Gene. Shout oh, out to know, okay. Okay. Hopefully, I hope he got his page back. His page just got hacked and he had to start a new one. So I really hope he can get it back. That, that happened to a couple of people. That happened to my boy Jay Garcia and to Daniel Jean. Fucking crazy. They're trying, they're trying I, to keep the comedians that. down. I didn't know that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Daniel came down here for All-Star Weekend. And I used to tell him all the time, like, like how, uh, how, how wild it was down south. And people think because you're friendly that it, or, or people talk slow that is is sweet but they don't understand that motherfuckers do not play down here oh and hell he, yeah. he was like yo atlanta is gangster than a motherfucker man and, and he had to find out that he had to find out the hallway stopping at the gas station where everybody got got pistols and some more shit they seen people getting stumped out just <laughs> right out there in the open so he was like okay now i get why you was able to make the transition from down here to up there and it was cool you know what yeah, I'm saying? i mean listen if people just look at how how Georgia is dealing with COVID and what the fuck they're doing with the fucking voting laws out there. You know that there's some fucking crazy shit. In Say it again. A. Say it again. So you, so you just cracked the code right there. And then the another thing they be forgetting is that we still fight racism down there. So you, you, we, we over here fighting motherfuckers that, that, that hate us for, for the color of our skin. So when I move up there and all I got to do is goddamn battle other ghetto, ghetto, uh, 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 black folks or black, get old white folks or what? Nigga walking apart. Yeah, you know walking what I apart. hate? I hate that my platform is not bigger than than it is because I want to be able to speak on how George is trying to kind of reinstate Jim Crow, you know, and how Stacey Abrams is on the front line and she needs to get more of a voice and, and she needs to be on more platforms that educate the entire country on what the fuck they're doing to, you know, to disenfranchise, you know, and to restrict the, the vote, you know, of the black community down there. It, it's, ins it, it's insane. That's why, I mean, I'm happy that I'm part of this movement uh, with my boy, Rob Love, uh, uh, called I Am The Rob Vote. Rob Love, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, so I encourage everyone that's watching, you know, uh, follow I Am The Vote on Instagram. It's a great movement. It teaches people, you know, what basically the, the voting right means. And if it wasn't so valuable, they wouldn't be trying to take it away from you like they're trying to do right now. So shout out, yeah, so shout out to Rob Love and all my hashtag I'm the vote people. And um, yeah, so I know Georgia's don't they don't play. So what was like your mentality, you know, coming into New York and what was your like, did you know anyone up in New York before you came here? I, I knew my uncle. Uh he he uh he's an artist himself. He was very recluse too. So he didn't get out much. And he would just be telling me all these old goddamn uh scary stories and shit of how crazy New York is and shit. He um uh, he, you know, and he, uh, that didn't do nothing for me. Uh, I felt like where I was was scary enough. I felt like not making it was scary enough. So, you know, put me in it. Put on. me anywhere. I guarantee you, I'm the realest nigga in the room. I put me anywhere. And uh, so, you know, um, were there any movies I, that were there any movies that you saw as a kid of like <laughs> New York, like a uh, like New Strat Jack City or Black, New Jack uh, City? Yeah, yeah, New Jack City, Belly. Uh, or, ju damn, or juice, you know. Uh, 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 juice, yeah. Um, damn, what the hell was I was just about to say? Shout out to my boy Ice T. I was in a rap group, Sex, Money, and Guns for life. Okay, okay, yeah, Ice T, man. Uh, it, it was a bunch of shit I watched. Um, uh, Sugar Hill, all kind of shit. Mm -hmm. uh, Hall, uh, Harlem Nights, all all kind of things. There. So, so you was know. New York? Was New York anything like? I mean, so was that no the thought in no. your head? Okay. No, none of that shit was like okay. that when I came. I got to friendly New York. Okay, what part of New York uh, did you... Uh, did Harlem. You Harlem. Oh, one, 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 wait, one, that's one, a, uh, fifth between 7th and 8th. You said that's the friendly part of New York? I mean, that's 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 Harlem. Uh, Harlem don't play. Yeah, uh, I don't either. So, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, read in between the lines. <laughs> yeah, so, I, 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 yeah, everybody know me out there. When you first so when you first got to New York, what was the your first like gig or like what was your first point of action? I'm sure you didn't have like a business plan written down, but I'm sure you had something in your head like I'm gonna go to New York and make it. The first thing I'm gonna do is this shit. Figure shit out. So when I got in Times Square, I was it was confused, man. I didn't know where to start, bro. 
Um, I just called all the comedians that I knew and trying to get booked and stuff. They wouldn't book me. Uh, Rip Michaels, the one he Rip Michaels, my my wilding out homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Um, he he had me booked everywhere in at uh in New York, and you know he was the only one. Um, that uh, who else? Oh, Gerald Kelly. Uh, 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 uh Marshall Brandon, Kareem Green, Dino Vigo. Um, these were my core guys. Uh, Jackson, comedian Jackson. He had, he gave me some money too. And there was a couple other motherfuckers that died. I forget what their names is. Damn. Ugh, well, shit. God, well, but, God uh, yeah, bless but, the dead. But I'm glad yeah. you mentioned them because <clears throat> in order to make it in this business, I mean, listen, there's very few people that can do it on their own. So the importance of establishing core relationships with people that you can trust, you know, that will stand, span the test of time is the most important thing in the world. So to everyone that's aspiring to be a comedian, a journalist, a rapper, a singer, whatever the fuck you want to do, just be a nice person. Don't be a dick. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah, if you want to be, be a stand-up comedian, be a stand-up guy too. Just like this. Yeah. Man. 100% man. And you got to go where it's at. You got to hang out in the spots every night, shake hands, go up, win, lose a draw, figure it out. You, uh, lions hang around lions, wolves hang around wolves. Got to go around your kind and just goddamn be there and do what the fuck you got to do. Got to put them hours in, man. Um, I, I, I had, um, uh, one weekend, um, I'm, I'm hanging out at, uh, Caroline's on Broadway. I go see my, my man, Corey Holcomb. I used to make his t-shirts for him in, uh, in Atlanta. And so I went to go uh, see him. Yeah, I, I'm Caroline. very aware of Corey Holcomb. I, I interviewed Avery Spears on my, on my podcast. So, so I, I definitely know who Corey Holcomb is. Did. And, um, so he had, um, he, who, who was hosting that night? Cypher Sound. Cypher Sounds was hosting that don't night. Don't get gassed. Yep, don't get gassed. And he had a, a comedy night that he did once a month called Don't Get Gassed. So uh, I had told Corey, well, I'm a, man, I'm up here. I'm living here for real. Now you're like, damn, bro. You up in New York, man. It's hard. Okay, I hope you can you can make a name for yourself. But I'm, nah, I'm glad you changed your name from Honey Bun to Jack Miller. That shit dope. And uh, 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 I was trying to highlight Cypher Sounds because I remember him from Direct Effect on MTV. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 he was kind of blowing me off. And and Corey saw he was blowing me off, and Cookie Cipher was a real big Corey Holcomb fan, and so I was like, "Yo, Cypher. I mean, uh, Corey, can you tell Cipher to fuck with me?" And so he was like, "Hey, yo, this my man, Jack Jack Thriller. You know, I know him as Honey Bun, but now he want to call himself Jack Thriller and shit, blah 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 blah." And but and uh, he just you know said just pretty much lighting it up and stuff. And um, well, he uh, 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 he said it really mean a lot to me if you took him under your wing. So Cypher invited me to uh, Hot 9-7 because he did the morning show every morning, mm -hmm. him and Rosenberg. And he, um, I, I told him that I write for him. He told him, he told, uh, Corey told him I was a good writer. And I was writing jokes for Cypher Sounds and he thought they was phenomenal. And he was like, hey man, you want to do the pre-comedy show before my uh, show? Uh, don't get gas. Oh, I do it once a month and shit. I pay you uh, $1,000 a night and whatnot. And I was like, boom. What? Yes, it was a dream come true. I had completely skipped the goddamn line inside the comedy club and whatnot. All the comedians that was giving me the cold shoulder and whatnot had to come goddamn kiss my ass to get booked. And uh, phenomenal, fucking yeah. phenomenal. Yes, yes, man. So I hosted Don't Get Gassed at uh, it was a club called Comics. And then uh, also at that time, I was also getting hot on the internet doing uh, these sketches and shit, man, doing all uh, these reenactments of like famous interviews. And then I think at that particular time, I don't know if I was there or not yet. Oh, I, I think the, uh, then I had uh, uh, 50 had reached out to me uh, for This Is 50, uh, fucking uh, Vlad and Worldstar all at the same time. At the beginning of 2010, shit would just start going off, and they all wanted me to be personalities on their site. And I went with 50 because I came to, to New York to find 50, <laughs> and uh, that's how that shit happened. That what? You know? That's a that's a fucking dope dope. In four months, four months, man. My my uncle only gave me six months to get my shit together. I got it together in four months. Four months. Two months ahead of New schedule. York. Yep, ahead of schedule because I wanted it, and I I wasn't waiting on nobody to put me on. I put myself on. Hey, you you got to nowadays. I mean, listen, if you don't have stake in the game and you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to believe in you. And, and nobody owes you see that. Nobody owe you nothing. That's a fucking fact. Nobody owe you nothing. 
I mean, the only, the, 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 the only person that owes you something is your motherfucking self. You owe it to That's yourself right. to take it to as far as you can fucking take it and ride it to the wheels fall off because the only person that you could blame in the end is your motherfucking self. Yes, 100%. you're going to have obstacles. You know, I, I like literally I just posted a story, you know, a couple minutes uh, before the podcast. I was like, life's going to throw you curveballs. If you're lucky enough to get up to the plate, you don't need to swing for the fences every time. Sometimes a single is just as good. So listen, wow. you got to. So you got to go. Listen, you got to go with what you know and you got to make sure it blows. That's what it is. Pause. Anyways. So what was your first interaction with 50 like? Like, um, that was it on the phone? Like, or I talked to me about the first time you actually like met in person. Now, were you in like full Jack thriller mode? You felt like you needed to be like animated and, and, uh, and impress him. Or were you more like on a business level? Like, how you doing, Mr. Mr. Curtis, you know, pleasure to meet you. Uh, he, at first I, I, he had me meet, um, people that work for him. I didn't meet him to about two months into working for him. Okay. And, um, cause they, they wanted to see what I was going to do. You know, like a lot of people, uh, get in situations like that and, um, they fuck they, it up it's a certain level. Yeah. They, yeah, no, they, they fuck it up. Level. Call it how it is. It, it's just a certain level of entitlement coming to it and whatnot. What, what you going to give me? And I was never on that type of time. I was like, oh, shit, now it's time to super turn up. Same same hustle times 10. Let's go. And um, uh, oh, it was a car show, Funkmaster Flex car show. Uh, that I had got a uh, booked over there, and G-Unit was supposed to perform there. And I, 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 I Cameron performed. I had to perform after Cameron. And he did Suck It or Not, ripped that motherfucker, too. And I went up and told a couple of jokes about Cameron and shit and blah, blah, blah. And then I got off stage and then all of a sudden, they get giving up for G-Unit. 50 comes on the stage. I'm like, oh, shit. Da, da, da. And so um, the, 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 the people that uh, worked for him that got me the book in that I had to talk to the, through him to, to talk to him, they told me to come outside. I didn't know. I didn't realize that they, I was fixing to meet 50 then. And um, I, I came out there and uh, Came outside by a, a SUV and he ran out of the SUV and then he grabbed me by my shirt and he started shaking me. What's up, boy? Well, I heard that shit you was talking about. Blah, 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 blah. And I, I was shocked. It was like this fucking 50 cent. He, he, he kind of took, took my soul. I was starstruck. And uh, he was just telling me, welcome to the team and blah, blah, blah. And such and such and how funny I was and uh, told me to come meet him at the office and then let's uh, sit down and talk about. Uh, what's going on? I got some advice for you and shit. And um, that's how that's how it happened. That, that's fucking incredible. You know, congratulations yeah, me, for that. He gave me a lot of good good advice, man, for about buying jewelry and all kind of different shit. But it's about being famous, like day one. I mean, he's yeah. a he's a powerhouse now. Like, I mean, he's at like people don't realize there's such a method to his madness. He everything such he does, method, yeah is calculated business Genius. even like down to the last word of the caption of any of his posts like yep. he's a he's a genius and you know, you know what I, doing. I, yeah i just love that you know we've seen him come up from like you know the shooter tough guy you know what i'm saying of uh you know the new york streets you know now to like a business mogul it's like it's a you know it's a good pattern to follow you know you got jay-z you know you got 50 you know you got a lot of people that you know started okay. like real down yep. real down in the gutter that now are the power players of the industry at the snap of the fingers. You know what I'm saying? So yep. coming up under the tutelage of, you know, a 50 is a great accomplishment. And like your story is not even done. Like what, like, that's like, that's where it just starts. Really. That's where it starts getting interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it ain't nowhere near that. No, I, and I'm like, I wouldn't even go as, I would even go as far as to tell you that we ain't even at the halfway mark yet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because now, because I, I, I know you got a, a brand new deal. We're, we're going to get into it. This we're still we're working our way up to it. We're working our way up to it. <laughs> but I will tell you this: if I died today, I'm not though. But if oh, I did, oh, yeah, yeah, get that out of the universe. But I, what I tell you is that if they did a, a, a lifetime movie or some little small biopic about me of what is already out there, it'll still be just as amazing. Fuck without yeah. what's about to happen. Is, Absolutely. Is, is the, the, the fucking the peaks and valleys in this shit are amazing. Who I'm would supposed who, to be dead. Who would play young and present day Jack Thriller if you had your pick at? 
If I had my pick, damn, bro. I know I'm putting you on the spot right there. Listen, I'm trying to yeah. will it into the universe. I'm not trying to will you deceased, but yeah, you know, yeah, that's just, not, just for yeah. argument's sake. Yeah, for argument's sake. Um, this way, if it happens, then they put some whack person that could be like, no, he fucking said it on my podcast. Nah, these are the people that we got to get. We got to get Denzel. Fuck it. Uh, we'll put some makeup on him. Fuck yeah, it. right. Right. A Derek Luke. I like Derek Luke a lot. And I like. Um, uh no no not that no nah. who else damn man that's a that, that I ask these questions all the time but I ain't never had it so did it for myself I'm trying so to yeah, be a good right journalist. Now, listen, I, listen, I'm following in your footsteps. <laughs> I'm just trying to be a good journalist and I'm saying do what I do I have some strange for a little bit of change got the nerve for the curve baby hey, I gotta I gotta put some thought in but right now yeah I'm gonna go ahead and go with Derek Luke off the uh, off the rip. Okay I, I love his work I love his work um Damn, uh, Luke Cage, <laughs> the dude that played okay. Luke Cage. I, I was gonna say, my, I was gonna say Michael B. Jordan. You know, like I mean, I, I see the resemblance. You know? Hey, hey, fuck hey, hey, fuck hey, you know hey, hey, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. We hey, this that would be a good stretch for Michael B. Jordan too. That's right. Listen, we're gonna test that. Would be an excellent stretch. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we didn't see him be dramatic, but yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, this is a different kind of drama over here. The, oh, that that's a fact. You know, you're, this is um, a different kind of yeah. drama. When you know what? Uh, let, let's even take it back a tiny bit. When did you first fall in love with hip hop? Uh, LL Cool J. I'm the type of guy. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to when I seen that the, uh, that just that whole Mission Impossible type vibe of that video when he ends up in the bed with all them girls. Yo, I was like, damn, I, I want that right there. That's what I want that for me. Uh, cool Mo D. Yeah. Um, let me see who else. Oh, and this guy just became my friend in real life. Oh, uh, 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 positive K. Positive K. Shout out, positive K. My yeah, he does. Right a, he does a comedy night here in Atlanta, and he's um he, he brings a a bunch of old school artists out and shit like that. Uh, yeah, and yeah, when he did, I got a uh, I got a man. Yeah, that that's it. Man, I was always a trap. Uh, uh, yeah, I was yeah, always attracted to shit. that player lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Whoever was same, on that player shit, that's what I wanted same, to do. Same here. Yo, the funny thing is, like, I, I'm so, I'm so glad you said that. I actually I've been on that fucking player pimp shit since I was a fucking little kid. Ever since my parents bought me my first like hip hop album, which they thought was supposed to be like this sweet, like you know, like non <laughs> non threatening. <laughs> Yeah, just a just a, a simple version of hip hop. It happened to be Ice T, you know, mm -hmm. because they saw like Ice oh, T, you know, like, like oh, how how yeah. bad could it be if somebody's named right. Ice T, you know? Yeah. So and also me and my brother running running around, you know, like oh gee, original gangster, screaming the n word left and right, and then all of a sudden they were like, you know, they punished us, they fucking made us watch Roots and stuff like that. But I always was around that, and then come years later, I happened to. Be lucky enough to be accepted into, you know, the rap group Sex, Money, and Guns with Ice Come on, Teams, man. Smooth the Hustler, Trigger the Gambler, DV Alias Christ. So it's Come like on, man. The, the, the fact that I, I I willed that player lifestyle into it. And then, like, years later, I see him in the uh, when he was doing the icewear clothing, and we were just up there, like, just because, you know, we were just following him. You know, he sees me from around the corner. He's like, Yo, Lyric, what up, pimp? I was just I mean, like, This is a corporate building. Everyone's in suits and shit like that. That made me feel good. That was like, oh, Come on, man. shit. I was Come like, on. That's, that's what it's all about. That was like the that's validation I needed. About. If I could, if, if I died the next day, I was happy. I, I, you see him in my casket like this. You know this. what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, listen, there's levels to this shit. And sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying, there's certain levels of success when you kind of, you know, get to befriend your icons or people that made such an impact in your life. You know, most of the time, it's not a good experience. You ever you ever meet anybody that, like, you thought were going to be a certain way, and then you're like, wow, this motherfucker's a dick. You ever come across that? Me. Okay. Me. Elaborate. Um, any, I feel like this, anytime I, I, it, it's a lot of inner work that has to be done and whatnot. And there's a lot of, uh, of you gotta be humble, man. And you, you gotta learn how to read a room and just uh, meet people where they are. 
and uh, respect their space. And sometimes I think that we ex we put people on pedestals and forget they are human. And um, you, they're, they're not the dicks, we the dicks. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, <laughs> I remember meeting Eddie Murphy and uh, uh, I, 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 I came up to him and I was excited as fuck. But then when he started talking to me, like you see him in these interviews now, it threw me all the way to fuck off because I'm expecting him to be Axel Foley. I'm expecting him to be Reggie Hammond. I'm expecting him to be quick. You know, all these people that I had grew up on. And he was just like, I was like, I thought I, I knew you. And he was like, that's what TV makes you do is that famous. You, you, you gonna be all right? I know it's kind of fucking you up a little bit. I said, yeah, it is. How you know? He said, man, you, you think you're the only you think you're the only one that didn't that look the head came with me with this confused ass epiphany and whatnot. And I was just intelligent enough to realize that I couldn't say what I wanted to say to this nigga. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't do, I didn't embarrass myself like that. He saw where I was mentally at the time that I was shook in that moment. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. The fact that and he like, actually the <laughs> fact that, that the fact that he actually like was able to like be like I know it's fucking you up a little bit and and like you know kind of like it's almost like he was you know he's like he realized that he was the dick at the moment and then he was like trying to cover it up a little bit he's like let me just check on his mental stability real fast before I let him go because that might have really fucked him up because I'm Eddie Murphy you know and I'm like you know I'm Mr. Roa you know and right like you said Axel Foley Reggie Hammond you know and which is funny because I was just watching Beverly Hills Cop one two and three the other day you know because you know we're still in a pandemic even though I'm fully vaccinated thank you God um but you know I still like to watch a lot of the classics I had a very similar experience when I met Steven Seagal for the first time now, now I live Whoa. in Staten Island so Steven yeah. Seagal lived in Staten Island and it was like my really my life my well I don't know if he lives there now you know but he did live there for a time so I'm uh I'm in I don't know I'm like eight years old and it's my birthday and my parents take me to uh well my mom took me to Palma Video so I could like rent a couple movies for me and my friends who are doing a sleepover and all of a sudden Steven Seagal is there one he doesn't have his ponytail you know but it's Steven Seagal and uh and I was a I was a huge karate fan I, I was in karate for for years uh, and you know, I, I've practiced my whole life. Bruce Lee is like, you know, uh, basically like my idol. You know, I know everything about him. You know, Reggie Clindo. You know, I know all, all his proverbs, all his all his shit. But so I really? go up to so I go up to Steven Seagal. You know, because you know that was fucking. You know, that was you know hard to kill. You know, and fucking, you know, like he was a fucking. He was like the first white guy besides. You know, Chuck Norris, you know, what I'm saying of my generation for us to idolize besides Van Damme, who came, you know, a little bit later. So I went up to Steven Seagal and I was like, I was like, you're great. And he looked down at me as like, this great at what? And I was just like, oh, he stole my heart. And so and my mother I came over and said, this is like, who are you to talk to people like that? <laughs> so, you know, Jew Jewish mother and she's a teacher for like 40 years. You know, you know, she she don't play that fucking game. Staten Island, you know, uh, e even though like we are a little blip on the map in New York, you know, uh, we mean business. So my mother was like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to like that? So I was like, thanks. But I was hurt because, you know, that was like an icon of mine. And I was like, hmm. That's when I've realized that was like the Matrix moment where it's like I was exposed to reality. It's like, wow. People are fucking dicks. So it's kind of like driving. It's like it's like you could either be the asshole or be fucked by the asshole. Like it's like pick your poison. I see. I, me and you got we looking at it two different ways because, like I said before, people want you to be who they see on TV, and that shit ain't that shit's not reality. People, that's what they do, and not who they are. And so I, I, I when I, I look at it a whole other way when Steven Seagal said that to you. Like, great at what? Well, I, I answered he wanted, him. I said, he wanted I, you to, what he, yeah, well, uh, I, what I, he I, I answered him, but it's like, the look that he had, it's like, you could tell, it's like, I was annoying him. I was like, I was like, you're great at martial arts. What was, the look? I, I, what was like, the look? Like, I'm an eight-year-old he has in the movie? Did you yeah. talk about the, move, the look he got in movies? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty he much. He was in character, Jay. Well, I well, well, me and my mother picked up a real, real vibe, you know, that it was annoying. What the shit is, out of so let me ask you this question. 
Where he's thank, supposed that, to thank you, man. Up. I appreciate it. That's it. Just that's it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, See, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. Okay. So, I mean, I'll play devil's advocate. It's like, you know, maybe he just wanted to get his fucking movie and get yeah. back to his bitch, you know, and start fucking pounding away. And me, my eight-year-old kid, you know, annoying him in public, maybe I don't know no better. So maybe that is my bad. So if, no. I, see, if I see him, I'm going to apologize. Yeah, because you think about it. You ain't. Hey, you're not thinking like, you know, I'm telling you my Aiden Murphy story. <coughs> I'm of age. So my understanding of what's going on, just like, I having an out of a body experience and seeing me and this guy, like, hold on, this ain't he's not he's this, not these this, people. This is Eddie Murphy. Oh my god, you understand? Absolutely. You know, I, listen, yeah, I, but I, I, listen. I've been around celebrities, but I, but there are certain celebrities that it's like you're just like in awe of. You just painted a picture of who they really are, and it's like yeah. me and them. It's like, oh, whoa. You 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 remember? Did you you watch you 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 finished Power right? Absolutely. Okay, now you remember the last six episodes? They all are from different vantage points of how people perceive the, uh, that day going. Mm -hmm. Did you see how the, some of the, the, the jargon had changed up and the looks that the people had and shit and blah, blah, blah? A different That's perspectives. how real life is, the, the perspectives. So if you ask Steve, if, you, he, if, if he would re recall that day, he would probably look at that shit a whole nother fucking way. That you didn't even see, and then you're looking at the way you just said your mama came in, she see it from a, a whole different, different way too. Well, no, like, I ran, I ran, I ran over to her, and I was because I was like, he was just mean to me. I was a bit, I was a bitch, motherfucker, when I was a little kid. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, I was you, a tough you, kid. You, you left that part out. Nah, you left that part out, Jay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. I've been you drinking. Did, I, blame, did, I blame it on alcohol. You did some me too shit just now. You did some hashtag me too shit just now. <laughs> Listen, if you got to call me on my bullshit, I appreciate it. If anyone's allowed come to, on, you know you, you are, Mr. Thriller. You know you, yeah, come you. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm a man. Well, we're going to read in between Listen, the lines. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a mere mortal. I make mistakes. That's it. But, I ask for, but, I ask my for whole thing is, My whole thing is, and this is what I always want people to take away from me, or when, uh, but just up, up until now, if anything else you don't get from me, it's accountability. Accountability. Absolutely. What he did, what did I do? Self accountability. Even when, me that, even when you asked me that, what did I say? I was the dick. You did. Listen, that that's that's pretty admirable, you know, that you would admit that. I basically um I've said that the year of 2021 is the year of not only accountability, but you self did. accountability. You sure did. You Absolutely. sure fucking did. I, I, I remember that. I, yeah, I was on live with uh with Power Moves Prez, you know, a uh, 20 year executive from Bad Boy Entertainment. He runs this thing on uh, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. It's like for business entrepreneurs, you know, and uh, anyone that's really like wants to get in business, you know, um, like you need to take accountability for your own actions. You can't just start pointing the fingers. So at the like at the end of the day, it's like the only person you could blame is your motherfucking self, you know? Yeah. So it's like, so, but at the same time, I always say on every podcast that, to regret a decision that's made in the past is to not fully appreciate who you are today. So as long as yeah. you can reconcile with that, there's a certain level of success that you have to say, okay, these are goals and levels, you know, like I can't say the billion dollar mansion and all the cars and all the women is, is the final level of success. It's like, sometimes it could just be, yo, I, I woke up happy. I feel successful because I don't have those worries, you know? So, but I attribute everything that you've went through to now you're fucking happy and I'm sure you could appreciate yourself now because you're shedding the weight, working out like a fucking beast. You just got a new deal uh, with a, uh, you are now Mr. 85 South, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a great I just, I just, yep, yep, yep. So I want you to speak on that. It's like, because you've been through a lot. It's like, there's so much that we, like, we need like a fucking six hour session to talk about this guy's entire story, but we're trying to like make it, you know, short, condensed, you know, because, the man's busy, so I'm sorry. And he, we don't want his secretary to send me an invoice for timing, so we're going to try to keep it short. But how does it feel now that you got kind of your own situation and somebody's really seen your vision and understands your value? Uh, it feels great, but it, it all it all comes from, um, you know, on the come up, Mandy. Like I said, I know Carl, Carlos Miller since 05, 04, 05, when he first got to Atlanta. 
and whatnot. And, you know, I, I, I helped him out a lot, introduced him to some folks and stuff. Then, you know, when he found his way, we always remained friends. And then when he got on Wildin' Out uh, back in um, 2012, whatever the first year was and stuff like that, we would just keep in contact and we build each other up when we could and stuff. And, uh, you know, he had got a situation that um, turned into something real special, man. And, uh, you know, I was just hitting him up trying to see if they, he could help me when everybody else was, you know, not really being receptive to what I was trying to do. And uh, he said, yeah, like times 10, you know, um, you go where you want it, not where you tolerate it. And, uh, you know, it's just it was a beautiful thing. And one of the biggest things he was telling me that he always spoke with me about was accountability. When I when I was wrong, I, I never was I had a problem with saying I was wrong and I fucked up. Smart and I, did a, I had to do a lot of inner work inner work on, on myself and shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh you we know all like got, listen, about, we all got demons. We all got demons. Yeah. 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 And, and it's so how we deal know, with them. Yeah. yeah you, you have to address them. You have to address them and exercise them and uh you know get that shit going. And um uh, uh I'm just a better every day I just wake up and I try to be a better than I was yesterday. And that's what it's all about for me. And so to be in a black side this position right now, you know, get ready to do this uh podcast on 85 South's brand um with myself, Music Soul Child and Carl Payne. You know, it's a dream come true. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm about to go uh, right after I get off of here. I'm about to go to a, a meetup with Carl and music and stuff. And we get ready to uh, get in pre-production. And, uh, you know, it's 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 amazing, man. It's, uh, it's, now, it's just amazing. My question. Are you allowed to divulge the secret sauce or the concept of the podcast yet? Or are you waiting? Not to, yet. Wait, oh, or you waiting to like smash us ants with a fucking sledgehammer? Yeah, yeah, that, that way. They they just they, they uh I can't give it away yet. Okay, I, and I and I respect that because timing is everything, and sometimes you know the and I won't the, do <laughs> that, that, that. Listen, the exclusivity of it, you know, is what makes it exciting. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I gotta say, you know, as somebody that's met you, do you actually do you remember the first time that we met? Uh, we was in uh this is fifty office in uh, uh French's office. Nope. Before that, uh, 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 um, coast to coast, it was that. No, it was that my girl Heather Hunter's party on Fourth of July, like, like four or five oh, years ago. Oh shit! Back We're then, my divorce. I think so. I don't know. You always no, have I, you, never, you never spoke about shit, but all the girls always flock to you anyway. So I was just like, I assumed that you know. You oh just heaven. shit! So back what you were saying about that was seventeen, uh, right? That was uh, uh eighteen. Uh, pro- probably two thousand seventeen, two thousand either two thousand sixteen or two thousand seventeen. Dig mm. shit! Shout out my girl Heather Hunter. I love yeah. her. Girl. She's such Me such a too. fucking sweetheart and so beautiful fucking soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs- absolutely. You know, I love I love her to the death. Yeah, um, yeah. What you were talking about about how when people meet like their idols and stuff like that. Now, you know, prior to me meeting you, I had been, I had been on jackdrilla.com with a couple of like songs that I did and some articles and some write-ups. So it's like, so meeting you in the flesh, you know, for the first time, you know, you were, I, I gotta say, you were super cordial and super nice to me, even though I like, I probably looked like, you know, just like, you know, some flashy, you know, like people looking, you know, white kid, you know, that just, you know, happened to be at this exclusive party. But you were always super cool and super cordial. And, and when we were talking for a while, I was like, wow, I was like, Jack, besides being a stand up comedian, he's also a stand up guy, you know. And then when we uh, were kicking it at one of Shampoo's party, because Shampoo is like my brother, you know, um, then I really got to kind of know who you are besides just following you for however many years for appreciating your talent, because it's what you are. You're a genuine talent. And the industry, you know, is. Um, it's privileged to have you, you know, so we, uh, we want you to keep rocking on, you know, as much as possible. So you were always a uh, real cool to me in person. So I appreciate that because, you know, Man, for, some, thank you, bro. For, for someone of your stature, it's like, even though like, you know, you, you can't be at Heather Hunter's party unless you're really somebody, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's that like, you know, mutual respect there, but it's like, you don't know me from a hole in the wall yet, you know? So it's like, even though, because I look totally different back when I was in a rap group, I fucking I had a do rag hat to the side, wore my pant leg up. I, I I was heavy. I looked like a fucking you know criminal that I was ready to fucking you know 
slashy and stuff like that. So I looked completely different during my rebrand. But yeah, it was always uh, it was always a cool time with you, Mister Thriller. So uh, man, I look forward. Thank to, you, man. Yes. So I look forward when you come back to New York and Heather throws one of her parties. Hopefully, you will grace us with your presence again. You know, and I know you don't. I know you don't smoke weed. I know this. I'm gonna How get you. you? I'm, a, I'm a, but I'm gonna get you high, man. I did, did. Appreciate so, that. Uh, okay, so when is the launch? Uh, 85 South. Uh, before like we do like the ending credits and stuff like that, because uh, you know, I'm being conscientious of your time because I know that time is money, you know, and I ain't trying to fucking mess. I need with some. Hey, 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 um, I would say just stay tuned. Uh, I think you're gonna know for sure. I can't give you an exact date because we're still inside the um. The planning processes and whatnot, and okay. like we did the paperwork. It, it was more paperwork on top of paperwork. This shit, everything that's been done right right now. So all I can tell you is within the um, stay tuned. Within the next thirty days, you're gonna see uh, 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 mountains move. Okay, so the rollout is about to be out. Yeah, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you, uh, Jack. Yeah. If there's if there's uh, if there's one thing that you could leave us with. What's one thing that is not Googleable? I'm glad I fucking was able to say that word without all the, you know, all the, the you know, drink that I've been drinking. Because I ain't, you see, I got it uh, covered up because they ain't about the culture. I'm waiting for sponsors to give me the new drink so I could, you know, promote their brand because I'm all about elevating the culture. But if there's one thing that you could tell people about Jack Thriller that they don't know, that they're not privy to, that they ought to know about you, what would that be? One thing that you don't know, Dan, because I'm, I'm pretty much an open book, but something that people don't know about me, uh, I'm a big time loner. Big time loner. Okay. Um, so introverted. If you see, if you have super introverted, and it, nine times out of ten, if you see, if you did see me in the past, I probably if we, with somebody, I did probably with my ride or some shit like that. And, you know, and. Um, I, I just like I, I love my alone time. Um, I got a new girlfriend now. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I did. I I think I finally got it right. God I bless. I finally got it. I hey, got somebody listen, on, I got somebody and it seems like you're in the right space and the right mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you, you have to be, uh, I believe, emotionally available as well as phys physically available. So it's like, yeah. you know, your your body, you know, like. I don't know if you're a spiritual guy or anything like that, but I, I really do believe there is a, a connection similar, like in nature, how they just know, okay, we're going to mate. Like, you know, when the lion jumps on the female lioness, you know, and it's like, you know, let you know I didn't the king of the jungle, you know, basically, I feel like there's a, a vibe that you just know when it's right because everything in your life is right. So, yeah, yeah, God, yeah. so, so God bless it and best of luck, man. Thank you know, cause you. I want, I want nothing but the best for good people. I've been following you for a long time. I feel you got a very interesting story, you know, um, besides meeting you in person, you know, like we run in a lot of the similar same circles. So whenever you do come back to New York, if you do grace us with your presence, please look me up, you know, hopefully COVID will be over. We can definitely hang out. Please preach the good word down in fucking Atlanta that masks work, get vaccinated. Let's just, just get back to normal. That's it. That's it. There's just like nothing to it, just to do it. But one uh, but uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you and uh, and if you got anything going on, now's the time to plug it. Yeah, uh, so you can find me at Jack Thriller. I finally got my fucking Facebook back after four <laughs> with four years. Got a new manager. This motherfucker's amazing. Got my Facebook back. Um, uh, lost my Facebook in a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> four years man since 17 shit been gone Damn. yeah yeah man so you gotta be careful who you line your stuff up with that's a uh, fact that's, that's why that's why I'm single until I know it's ready to fucking go you know yeah yeah that. um uh, uh you could it says young jack thriller on facebook uh young jack thriller on uh twitter at jack thriller on um so make sure you just follow me man and I love y'all man thanks J Paul for having me on man Absolutely, That's my manager. Man. I better get out of here. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, before I let you go, I want to leave leave you with a quote that I'd like you to apply to your life, you know, which I have done. And basically, we are all just here for a small cup of coffee. I'm just trying to drink it while it's still hot. I'm your boy. I am Joe Paul. We are brought to you by Radio Pushes, Results No Hype. Make sure you check us out at theverifiedpodcast.com. We were just chopping up with the one and only Jack Thriller. Love you.